Well, good morning. Here we are, nine o'clock, twenty eighth of July. My goodness me, another month almost gone. It'll soon be Christmas. Oh my word! Hallelujah and all that stuff. Oh. So let's come before the Lord. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty is above the heavens, is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands and have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild birds of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O oh Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence set, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Psalm 34 I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who took to him, look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called out and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the broken-hearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. 
I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called out and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Ezekiel 33, chapter 21, to the end of the chapter. In the twelfth year of our exile, in the tenth month, on the fifth day, a man who had escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has fallen. Now the evening before the man arrived, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he opened my mouth before the man came to me in the morning. So my mouth was opened and I was no longer silent. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, the people living in those ruins in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one man, yet he possessed the land. But we are many, surely the land has been given to us as our possession. Therefore say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Since you eat meat with the blood still in it, and look to your idols and shed blood, should you then possess the land? You rely on your soul, you do detestable things, and each of you defiles his neighbour's wife. Should you then possess the land? Say this to them. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. As surely as I live, those who are left in ruins will fall by the sword. Those out in the country I will give to the wild animals to be devoured, and those in strongholds and caves will die of a plague. I will make the land a desolate waste, and her proud strength will come to an end, and the mountains of Israel will become desolate so that no one will cross them. Then they will know that I am the Lord, but I have made the land a desolate place because of all the detestable things they have done. As for you, son of man, your people are talking together about you by the walls and at the doors of their houses, saying to each other, Come and hear the message that has come from the Lord. My people come to you, as they usually do, and sit before you to hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. Their mouths speak of love, but their hearts are greedy for unjust gain. Indeed to them you are nothing more than the one who sings love songs with a beautiful voice and plays an instrument well. But they hear your words, but do not put them into practice. When all this comes true, and it surely will, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, Seed for sowing and bread to eat, 
So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. James chapter 3 Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are still by, steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbour bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, and peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. This is the gospel. Oh, no, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not thinking. <laughs> Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I'm always with you and you hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, 
For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. So, it's raining, it's chilly, the study's gone back to a normal temperature, hallelujah. Much as I've loved the sun, I must admit I'm revelling in a bit of cool and the ability to breathe. And as I kind of wish I could still be in bed this morning, it's the, the drugs are working, the ear infection is coming to its close, but I have no energy at all. I look at the things before me and realise with just an ear infection, how blessed I am not to have COVID, not to live in a place where there is famine or flood or fire, or in a refugee camp where housing is scarce and so many things are absolutely awful. Father, this morning, may we look at the problems we have, the things that beset and surround us and realise that in the order of the day, in the course of this world, we are so blessed. The things we consider problems are nothing when taken into reflection of the world around us and its needs and its brokenness. So, Father, we pray for those this day with struggles, with problems. We pray for those this day with cancers, those we pray for regularly with mental health problems, for those whose work life, whose family life, whose everything is in disarray and disorder. Father God, as we come to start our day with the things we have planned and the things that will unexpectedly arise, we pray that we would have a cheerful countenance, that we would be a blessing and realise how very blessed we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, as we start to look at the world, as we wonder what the world has to offer, we realise what the world has to suffer. Father God, we come before you today and we pray for peace in Tunisia, in Ethiopia, we pray for the situation with Tigray as others are joining the Ethiopian army as they are standing together to fight the people in Tigray. And Lord, as people will flee to Eritrea, undoubtedly, we pray for the whole region. We pray for peace in Nigeria and all that is happening there. We pray for the conflicts and the divisions in Mozambique as the army take a base back, that the militants are taken. We pray for Israel and Palestine. We pray for Afghanistan and Iraq. As soon there will be no coalition or other troops. And as over 50% of Afghanistan is now handed back to the Taliban, Lord, all that we have done seems to be slowly swept away. We pray that that would not be the case. And Father God, as we pray for the world, we think of Myanmar, we think of China and India and their conflicts and China and the world, Russia and all that the world sneers at with that nation at this time. We pray for Athens as fire is spreading through the city as yet another overly hot bout of weather causes in another place fires and father god 
we think of Latin America and the Covid there and the gang warfare and there's so many wrongs. Father God, wherever we look today, we find a need to pray for. Help us to pray. Help us to stand with those who are oppressed, broken and overrun. And help us to stand against governments that are wrong, that are despotic, that are badly governing and act against their own people, causing conflict within and without the nations around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church and her life. And Lord, what life that should be, it should be the life and the love of the God-made flesh, leading all to the Father by the power of the Spirit. So we pray for those who are in leadership, that they would guide the sheep rightly. And we pray that no matter how high they are from the highest pointy hat in the world, the Archbishop of Canterbury down to the lowest person, that's me waving Lord. May we never forget that we are Laos, we are the people of God and that Lord, our liturgy, the work of the people, is to praise you and to make you known among all nations, all people, friends, families, neighbours and the grumpy bloke who lives down our street if it's not us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you for being with us this morning, guys. Have a good morning. Stay safe. Be blessed. And if I can help, if we can help, give us a shout. We're here and we're willing. Bye for now. Have a good day. Bye.